This is a tale of abuse at a national scale. They would come into our rooms in the middle of the night. Involving an untold number of victims. I saw the boys being taken away. It didn't have a choice. Where whistleblowers were ignored. Those boys were passing blood in the toilets and showers. And the people in power did nothing. I didn't understand what was going on, but nobody would talk about it. Gabon, on the west coast of Central Africa, a country where every young footballer dreams of playing on the world stage. Four years ago, former international Parfendong returned home to set up a football academy. J'avais cette envie de vouloir rentrer chez moi au Gabon parce que je me disais ce que j'étais en train d'apprendre ou transmettre aux petits Européens, je pouvais bien le faire aussi chez moi. Plus de 20 ans hors du Gabon, je connaissais plus beaucoup de monde dans le milieu du foot. Tout avait changé. And the changes, he says, were shocking. He discovered that sexual abuse of young players at all levels of Gabonese football was rife. J'ai fait moi toutes les étapes qu'il y avait à faire. J'ai parlé au président de la Ligue, j'ai parlé au président de la Fédération, j'ai été voir le ministre des Sports. Personne n'a voulu m'écouter. We spoke to more than 30 witnesses who say the sexual abuse ring has been going on for decades and that Gabon's football federation, Fegafoot, had been made aware of it. It wasn't until a British newspaper exposed the abuse in 2021 that four coaches were arrested. Three of them remain in prison. At the heart of the most damaging allegations was Patrick Asumu Ei, widely known as Capello. For decades, he was the head coach of Gabon's national youth teams. Crucially, Capello had the power to decide who would play for Gabon and who wouldn't. Il avait quasiment la position d'un dieu parce que tout le monde l'adulait. Les responsables de centres de formation, des académies, tout le monde voyait Capello comme le dieu. Capello admitted charges of raping, grooming and exploiting young players and is awaiting sentencing. The others deny the allegations. Many of the people we spoke to were too afraid to speak on camera. Actors have voiced their stories and names have been changed. Alexi climbed through the youth ranks in Gabon and went on to play in Europe. In Gabon, football and pedophilia go hand in hand. We're all told their stories. People will openly say this or that guy is a pedophile. We will make jokes about it. Make sure you don't go into the showers with so and so. We were laughing like it was normal. Another victim described what happened at an under 17 training camp. On the fourth night of the camp, they came to wake me and my best friend. They took us to a room with red lights. It was full of naked men. One of them was Capello. I have forgotten the names of the others. They started touching me and my friend, and I just didn't understand. So then they threatened me, saying that if I didn't do it, I would lose my place in the team. I would be left on the bench until the end of the tournament. I was so shocked. I didn't find any words to speak. All I had left were tears. I saw how they started to wreck my friend. I looked him in the eye, and he looked back at me, seemed to say, Let's just go along with them and get it over with. I told them I couldn't do it. I cried and screamed and screamed and screamed until they had finished with my friend. <laughs> they let him go and they told me I would never be selected to play ever again and that if I dared to speak to anyone about what happened, my family would be killed. Julien played for Gabon's national team for several years. I don't know how many coaches were abusing boys, but for one moment, let's take a look at Capello alone. He is the most well-known, and he has been doing this for 25 or 30 years. Every year, he had access to at least 50 boys, if not more. And that is just one person. 
Now let's consider how many other people were part of that network. Coaches, assistant coaches, and club leaders. We are talking about thousands of boys. Many questions have been raised about which authorities were aware and when. So they arrested Capello, but how long have they known and not done anything about it? They stopped at the lowest level. It goes all the way to the top, but they will do anything to cover it up. Capello is a scapegoat. It is the heads at the top that should be rolling. Je ne comprends toujours pas pourquoi certains sont en prison et d'autres sont en liberté. Ça, je comprends pas. Four months after the arrest of Capello and the coaches, Pierre Alain Mugengi, the president of Gabon's football federation, Fegafoot, was also arrested. He was accused of failing to report crimes of pedophilia. Il m'a dit en face qu'il m'a jamais vu dans son bureau lui dire ce qui se passait dans le milieu du football. FIFPRO is the global union for professional football players. I believe that when it comes to Mr. Mugenge's responsibility, you can look at it in two ways. Either he's incompetent because he should know what's happening uh, in Gabonese football as president of the federation, or he's guilty of having covered years of abuse for not acting after having received serious reports uh, of what was happening. Unlike Capello, Mugengi was not suspended by FIFA, the governing body of world football. He continued to manage Fegafoot from prison. And then Patrice Motsepe, the president of CAF, the Confederation of African Football, who are part of FIFA, visited Mugengi in jail. CAF's actions could be perceived as political interference. After almost six months in prison, in October 2022, Mugengi was provisionally released. Three weeks later, at the opening of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar, Mugengi was pictured hugging CAF's president, Patrice Mutsepe. cried when I saw that image. It makes me so angry. In July 2023, Mugengi was re-elected to the highest ranks of CAF as a member of the executive committee. The more time I spent in Gabon, the more I realized the full extent of abuse here may never be known. Almost two years after Capello was arrested, there are worries not enough has been done to protect children in the future. We put the allegations in this film to Fegafoot, CAF and FIFA. All parties condemned child abuse in any form in the strongest possible terms. Fegafoot and its president Pierre-Alain Mugengi denied all the allegations made against them and said appropriate actions were taken as soon as any allegations of sexual abuse in Gabonese football were made public. FIFA and CAF denied all allegations made against them and said the FIFA investigation initiated by the FIFA Ethics Commission is still ongoing. FIFA and CAF stressed all its investigations are handled in accordance with requirements made by the FIFA Code of Ethics, the Court of Arbitration for Sport, the European Court of Human Rights, and Swiss law. CAF stated its president, Patrice Motsepe, visited Gabon primarily to emphasize CAF's zero tolerance to sexual abuse and to support investigating authorities. CAF said Mr. Mugengi was a guest at the FIFA World Cup, and Mr. Motsepe greeted Mr. Mugengi, who they stated had no pending charges against him in this context. The former Gabonese sports minister, Franck Gemma, strongly denied having been informed by anyone about the sexual abuse allegations. <laughs> 